We'll grab that one. Yeah. All right, guys, welcome back to another goalie tips video. I recycle bin hero and I want to first off apologize for the massive delay we had in between videos here uh, without getting into too much uh, work got crazy. My daughter's been sick. I took a break from hockey once the LG season ended. So now the LG season is back in a swing. I thought I would kind of uh, take a different approach to these. We're going to look at my some of my saves throughout the week of LG, talk about them, what was going on, what was I trying to accomplish, uh, things like that. But in case you couldn't tell, I am in the CHL. Uh, yes, there is a difference in play between the CHL and like the top tier esports team, obviously. But I think what the things we're going to focus on and talk about here are fundamental and a goalie could use in, in almost any situation. Uh, this does not mean that because you recognize this, this situation in your game from my video, you do the exact same thing, but we're gonna kind of walk through the mental process and, and how I approached it. So all right, guys, let's now break that play down and get into what we saw here. So I moved ahead a little bit in the video because we don't need to watch the entry, curl and backhand and all that. And we're gonna kind of talk about this section here and we'll move on. So as you can see, the attacker is on his backhand. We are square to the puck. Our, our right leg is in front of the right post. There's almost no chance they score if they shoot here. It is EA. Crazier things have happened. But again, we're playing the percentages and we're trying to take away the easy opportunities. Now, him being backhand tells us he's looking to make the pass here. And as you can see, that ice is wide open. Both of his forwards recognize it and they're going to move into position, try to you know get in position to receive that pass and get the easy tap in. So right now, the puck carrier is just kind of in uh, kill time mode and just giving his boys a chance to get set for the play. So he's going to curl it, go back up the ice, buy his team some time, uh, and look to fire that pass across. So right here is the next part we want to talk about. He's now forehand here. He could shoot this puck if he wanted to. We have pretty much the angle covered. Um, there's not a lot he's going to be able to do there. So we know that we just have to kind of move ever so slightly to get now move from being in front of our post more to being kind of parallel with it because that weird angle is now taken away. There's not really a chance of us kicking it in off our off kicking our post and letting it go in that way. He does have this pass here. And then at the same time, he also has a pass all the way across here if this forward was to move up a little bit. So we can't worry about this this one so much. Um, it, it'd have to get through some defensemen. It's a longer pass. Uh, if that pass connects, it's pretty much a free goal. We have to control what we can take away. And in this instance, it's the puck carrier and this close pass. Um, barring some sort of desperation slide, we probably wouldn't even get there to make this save anyway. So not that we're not not what we're not thinking of it. We're just focusing on the things we can control. So pass is going to come across. And as you can see, we haven't really moved yet. Uh, and there's there's a couple reasons for that. So we're going to start pushing here in just a second. But since he's backhand, we don't want to overcommit far side. Uh, if he was to like receive this puck and then turn to his forehand this way, which is which is something you can see happen quite a bit then obviously we would move with that to try to make that save. It's still a dangerous play. We can't take away all the net, but we can do what we can to kind of minimize our chance to score. Instead, he, he kind of goes for that bubble backhand pass reception animation and then is going to fire it backhand on us. So since he doesn't have beauty backhand, we're not sweating it too much. We possibly could have been a little further over, um, but in the, in the heat of the moment and trying to not give up the short side and give up the easy one, we chose to play it kind of slow read where the puck is on the shooter stick and then react to it accordingly. So that's really it for this one. The, the moral of this story here is to not get so far ahead of yourself that you're taking yourself out of position on where the puck is. All right, guys, in the second video here in the same game, uh, we're going to break down kind of this, this uh, L drag to the slot shot and what we were looking for, why we didn't overcommit and what that all, what that all means. So full speed here brings it across quick shot, short side, Puck's loose, but we don't panic, we don't move, and we just get the cover animation, thankfully. So a few things to break down there, and let's kind of dive into it. All right, guys, so we moved ahead a little bit in the video. As you can see, he's already puck on forehand, getting ready to shoot, but I wanted to talk about and hone in on 
the important aspects of right before the shot happens here. So he's forehand, he's high slot. He's done this L drag, which we're seeing more and more. Uh, usually there's, there's two main plays that happen. It seems like in the C, either people bring it straight down the boards around and then they pass it up or they come far side and pass it up or they make this kind of L drag, um, keep it on their forehand. So he keeps it on his forehand here and we're not, we haven't again really moved a lot. Uh, we're, it's something I've really been kind of working on myself is trying to be patient and not overplay the potential and focus on the play in front of me. So what, what has happened here and what he's looking for is a few things. And this is stuff that we can use to, to our advantage as a goalie. Like I said, he's making that drag across the slot. We have him as a team extremely well covered. Uh, we have three guys kind of in the area. So we have to assume the forward recognizes that nobody wants to lose the puck, right? They will always take a bad shot on net over a turnover any day of the week. So we see that as the goalie. And because he's still kind of in the face-off circle area with the puck here, us being like here would open up a ton of the net here that we don't need to. There's no reason to. Yes, if he continues to go forehand, across the slot we need to move with that and it's blocker side and it's going to be a tough save but just like i said earlier we cannot get so wrapped up in the potential of what's going to happen and focus on what's in front of us so we don't really move here we just get the easy save animation holding our short side because as the goalie the short side is 100 percent your responsibility and this is a great example of trusting your demon to take away the far side of your net while you take care of the short side of the net all right, guys, in this next one, uh, as you can see, we have a very comfortable lead in net, but uh, no lead is ever safe in the NHL. Uh, four goal lead can very easily become a two or one goal lead off two or three shots. So you always have to be reacting. You always have to be ready. You always have to be kind of focused up and ready for whatever the game's going to throw your way. So we're going to move through this one kind of in fast motion so you can see everything happen in real time and then break down what happens. And unfortunately, they get the goal there. So for this one, guys, we're going to do a little bit different uh, because there's a few things that happen. And to go frame by frame, we'd probably be 10 minutes on this clip alone. So the blocker save, the rebound save, you know, we've talked about them extensively. We will go through them here. So he's curling at forehand slot on his forehand. You know, we are square in our crease. Uh, we are ready for the shot. We're, we're positioned. We're not giving up anything. We're not manual butterfly. We're just staying upright. Definitely this year, more than ever, it seems like if you stay upright, you get access to more save animations. We make the blocker high save, and we're going to kick out the puck for a tasty rebound. But as you can see, we stayed manual butterfly. So there's, there's, a, there's an important thing to know here. Once I saw the puck go off my blocker, I knew I was staying mud, manual butterfly. Muddy butterfly. I can't talk. Manual butterfly. Sorry. Uh, the reason being, I knew that the rebound was coming, right? Like it doesn't, especially in, these aren't real goalies, unfortunately. They don't really seem to focus on, you know, their blocker saves and forcing it towards the boards or directing it towards the boards. They just make the save. And most of the time, those saves end up being a rebound. When it goes off my blocker, I noticed a manual butterfly because I need to slide over and try to make the save on the rebound. As you can see, he gets the glorious puck pickup animation where the puck was actually behind his stick then warps to the front of his stick and he's going to make a very crisp shot off of that love it ea you love to see pucks warp uh it just looks real good but fortunately we're manual butterfly we're moving we eliminate it we make the easy save no harm no foul there um but there's something else important here i want to talk about so he picks it up again for another rebound and as you can see now i am hugging the post and the reason that is, is when this puck is here and this, the forward has skated down to it, most of the time, they're just mashing up on the right stick to try to shoot as soon as they get it. And EA remembers that. I, I'm sure there's a better term for it, but what's going to happen is he shoots the puck as soon as he touches it. Uh, and so being on our post means he doesn't get some weird goal where it goes off of us and in which does happen, and it is something that happens in actual NHL games too, so you can't really fault the game for it. Um, 
that's why in those situations, I like to hug the post. I like to take that away uh, just because I, it, it's gone in off me and it feels bad as I'm sure it has for you all as well. So the, the end of this is something else I want to talk about. It's not to rag on tips, although if you've been in my streams, you've heard me rag on them before. Yes, I think tipping is too easy. Yes, I think one-timers are too easy. That is a conversation for another day. But essentially, they kick it up to the point, and we see the shot coming. And what I see as the goalie is this guy right here in front of me. I know they are looking for a tip play. And there's a few things you can do as the goalie to try to minimize the chance of this going in. Not saying you can do it every time, but as you can see, I'm going to drop manual butterfly to try to get that tip and take it away and also take away the shot in case he misses a tip and it goes, you know, comes through. So unfortunately he gets some just glorious tip that goes through the wickets of him and the defenseman and then somehow flutters up and in. There's not a whole lot we could have done there. Uh, if you wanted to get really hypercritical, we could have been a little more up in, in kind of their, their space here because as a goalie, the closer you are to the tip, the more likely you are to make the save because you're just, again, playing the angles. It's not like you get any more reaction speed or anything like that. You're just increasing your size relative to the net and hoping the puck hits you. Yes, there is, you know, this play where this forward passes it and then this guy passes it to this guy for the easy tap in. But there's a lot of things that have to happen there in order for that to work that we can't we can't spend a lot of time or focus on because we have to worry about where the puck is in the moment. And obviously once the puck leaves the defenseman stick, we know the shots coming. We don't have to worry about that anymore, but this is a situation where, you know, you may say, Oh, you got caught napping because you're worried about the far side and you know, you moved and no, it's just sometimes the tip goes in and it feels bad and there's not much you can do, but just kind of clear your head mentally and go on to the next one. And I'll give you a prime example here in a second. That is that is a sad boy right there for letting in the tip. Yes, it feels bad. Yes, you feel terrible because you've let in a goal, but you got to kind of allow yourself a few seconds and then move on to the next one because they can very easily get two or three of those on you in the span of a minute. All right, guys, we've now moved on to the next game of the night for LG, and this is just kind of a play I'm seeing a more of. Um, not this exact one, but the setup is very, very similar. And I'll get into the differences here in a second, but I think it's worth recognizing as a goalie and being aware of. So we'll get into this at regular speed. They enter the zone, bring it below the goal line, kick it up for the high slot one T, and we make the save. And it's for being a gold one T and our guy making kind of a nonchalant save. I, I think there's a few reasons as to why that happened. And we'll get into that here in, in you know, kind of our breakdown. So here we go, guys. Uh, I've skipped ahead quite a bit. We're just going to focus on the one T and our positioning because that's really the, the key of this play. But what I was talking about earlier with the setup is we're seeing a lot of teams just really come down the boards or kind of, you know, this this uh, third of the ice, this quarter of the ice here, get below the goal line and then kick it up for, you know, a one T or they'll come around, you know, to closer to the net, still do the same thing or they'll go all the way around and kick it up to, you know, someone here, here or here for the goal. And what they're looking for there out of you as the goalie and what you have to try to your best to not do or if you do react quickly enough is either hug the post or drop manual butterfly. So you see, we've stayed upright. If, if we were to hug the post here, if we were to drop manual butterfly, there's no shot we're going to make this upcoming save. So being upright this year, you definitely seem to get more uh, opportunities to make saves than you do if you're manual butterfly or hugging the post. If it obviously hits you, then it you know should be a save. But because we stay upright, because we read the play, and because we're going to make the move here in just a second of pushing over, we're going to be able to make this save. It, again, if we were manual butterfly or hugging the post, and I can see there we go to finally start moving, and you best believe the whole time that pass happens, I'm holding left on my left stick, but it delays because of X factors, which is just the wildest thing ever. Um, we make the easy glove save. So this is something as a goalie, you want to be kind of aware of. Um, obviously him having gold one T you need to recognize those players on the ice almost at all times, especially, you know, they're going to hover kind of in this area looking for that one T that definitely seems like there's kind of like a, a sweet spot or a hot spot, like NBA jam. Uh, but you can't drop manual butterfly on those plays. You have to kind of either 
right stick slide, hope it hits you, uh, turbo skate, key push, whatever you got to do to get it to hit you because you're very rarely going to be able to make that glove save. Same game here, guys, and we're going to kind of talk about this play and why it kind of goes a little bit against what I just said about, you know, not dropping manual butterfly and why in this instance it was called for. Um, hindsight is 2020. If he would have roofed it on me, you know, probably would have been a goal. But again, play the percentages. So here we go. Hard around, just kicks out to the middle ice. Easy peasy. Manual butterfly in the middle to make the save. So let's get into this one. Break it down just a little bit in terms of why we did what we did and explain uh, why it worked. So we're going to pick this one up. He's already made the pass, already received it. Uh, this is a very dangerous play. There's just no other way to put it. This is one that you're not going to make the save every time. It's definitely one of those where, you know, if you make the save, it's it's one of those bigger moments. It's one of those kind of, you know, bailing your team out sort of situations and obviously feels good. But this is also one where I don't think if you stay upright, you make the save. And the reason that is, is against... And this is this is no no bash on the other team here. Uh, you know, against higher talent, higher talent, they will shoot manual manual five hole on you, and you are not going to get down in time, in terms of uh, in terms of you know a save animation to make that save. So you know what we've done here is we floated left to cover more of the more of the net because he was more than likely shooting far side. You can always kind of play that. Uh, play that 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 dice roll, if you will. Because uh, even if you shoot short side, you should have it still pretty much covered. We're dropping manual butterfly. And as you can see, there's no real save animation other than us sliding in butterfly and making the save and it kicking off of us and out into the front into a less dangerous area. So in these sorts of situations, sometimes manual butterfly is the way to go. Um, if someone's on their forehand with it that low in the ice, you know, where he is below the hashes and foot and a half, two feet from your paint, dropping manual butterfly is not a bad idea. You want to make sure you're, you know, you're on top of the shooter as much as you can, taking away his angles. If you were to just be sitting on your goal line manual butterfly, you probably get sniped there. Um, but that's a situation too, where other goalies may prefer to sit on the goal line and stay upright. But I just feel like I've been scored on so much in those situations uh, in five hole because I didn't drop butterfly that I, I dropped butterfly there because... You know, in the real world, if someone was to shoot high, they, they have a chance of missing, going over the net, uh, you know, going off the crossbar, whatever the case may be. You can't really miss the net if you shoot low. Like, you can't go under the net. So that's why I dropped manual butterfly there. Fortunately for us, it worked. But this could very easily have been a clip where uh, he went glove high on us, manual butterfly, and it went in. But I like to play the odds here and drop manual butterfly. Your mileage may vary just kind of walking you through my thought process here. Here we are in the next one, guys. This is a pretty action-packed game. We're going to go through this one extremely quickly. There's not a lot here. Uh, it's a very rudimentary elementary save, uh, but there are some two important things I want to talk about here. So we'll just go through it real quick in real time and then kind of break it down. So again, shooter's got the puck, forehand, high slot, going to shoot it short side on us, easy blocker save, away, out of danger, very simple. Okay, so just real quick here, uh, forehand, high slot. As you can see, we're we're about as high as I like to be in the crease. I don't like to go over the, um, I'm sure there's a more technical term for it, but I just call it the elbow of the crease, unless like the puck is, you know, up here at the blue line with the defenseman and, you know, they're looking to tip or something along those lines. So I'm very rarely that high in the crease. This is about as high as I like to go. He's going to shoot it. Uh, and you may be wondering, you know, why this one is so important to talk about uh, for two reasons. A, first off, positioning. As you can see, we're up. We are challenging the shot. Um, you can definitely go too far and open yourself up to passes and things like that. Uh, or you can be too low and, you know, open up the tops of your nets and stuff. So I, I like this position. I like this kind of line for the... I cannot draw a straight line tonight. Uh, this elbow to elbow straight line here. Uh, it's kind of like where uh, I feel like any higher and you're not really doing much good. You're only trying to take yourself out of position. So we're going to get into it and then we'll get into kind of why um, why I stayed still. And there's something important here I want to get into as this shot comes across. So shot, 
he kind of drifted. Now, a lot of times what you will see is the play over here or here as he drifts. Um, and there's two reasons why I didn't move specifically to for, for this play, excuse me. A, if he makes the pass here to this guy, yes, he's on his forehand, kind of, you know, he's not offhanded, so he can shoot that, but we're in position for it. We're, we're, we should be able to make that save. If he goes across, though, we have a defenseman in a pretty good spot. So we, again, we can't really worry about the hypotheticals too much. Uh, if we get wrapped up in the what's, the coulds, the shoulds, the ifs, all of that, you're not going to be an effective keeper. Uh, you have to trust your defenseman. You have to trust, you know, that they're in position and that they're going to take away that pass. Even if he makes that pass, I still feel pretty confident that we would be able to get over in time and make the save because it's glove side. Um, he doesn't have, if memory serves me correct, he didn't have gold one T. So I wasn't worried about anything like that. So that was really the other point I want to talk about is why I didn't overplay to the far side for this guy. Because uh, our defensemen, you know, we have to trust them. And we took away two out of three of their scoring opportunities, which is about all you can ask for in, in goal, in, in goalie world. Same game again, guys. The score is now 2-2. Uh, I'm going to try to do a better job next week of also getting the goals so we can talk about, you know, what I was going for and why it didn't work. Um, I don't want you guys to think I stop all the shots and I have shutouts every day because that's definitely not the what happens. But this is a longer clip, so I don't want to spend a ton of time not having it run. I'm going to have it run kind of while I talk in the background. So they've entered the zone. They pick up the puck. It gets lost, goes behind the net, picks it up. Uh, we are stuck manual butterfly here and it's a very important what happens after he comes out from in behind the net that we need to talk about so that was the play at full speed so you kind of see what little time i had to react to and now we'll get into kind of what my thinking was a little bit in more detail so picking up this play behind the net now uh we're going to talk about a few things here how i ultimately made a mistake and was able to kind of bail myself out thankfully pucks behind the net that right there was our mistake. Um, I have kind of this mental rule and, you know, it's something that I need to be a little bit better about, but when the, once the puck crosses, you know, the cage or uh, the support bar in the cage, that's when I drop manual butterfly uh, because I need to be able to get to a post or a wrap. This forward did a great little kind of no deke deke where he wiggled a little, got the puck over that center line of the net triggered me to drop manual butterfly and then has brought it back and he's now you know got me in a very bad in a compromised situation because you don't want to be manual butterfly for a very long time and so this is something where i in case you couldn't tell in the in the in the full motion or even when i just paused it here i pushed right manual butterfly to try to make the save on what i thought was going to be the wrap on this side so I am out of position now, and I'm recognizing the error of my ways. So this, this guy is going to now realize that he has a defender here, he has a defender here. I, as the keeper, should have recognized this guy right here and been like, okay, I don't really need to, I don't need to like full sell for this potential wrap. I have a defender there who's looking to take it away. I didn't, that's on me, and now I am stuck on an island and I have to find my way out. So the forward's going to kind of see where the defensemen are, cuts back to the top, and this is where I'm sure he's seen that I am butterfly and he knows he doesn't have the wrap on me. So he's gonna bring it up, get a little bit higher, and then shoot. And I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of hard because unfortunately my recording is not the highest quality, but the puck is right here. You know, he has made a right choice with his shot. Uh, fortunately though, because we're not hugging the post, you can see there's a gap here. Uh, and so we're a little bit higher in our crease that allows us to make the save and kind of bail ourselves out, honestly. And you see, we get a nice little stick save animation as we're sliding. Looks like we pre-planned it all. Like we read the play miles in advance and we know what we're doing. Sometimes you gotta be lucky. And, and this was definitely one of those situations. If he'd come out a little bit higher, maybe gone a little bit more to the right, probably would have been a goal for him. So. The thing to take away from here is this is a great example of me getting too far ahead of the play. You know, I was 
as soon as he brought it behind the net, oh, he's going to try to wrap it on me far side. I got to be ready for that. And then the moment he made a wiggle, I'm like, full send. He's got it. And then, oh, he doesn't. I, I bit. And now I've got to kind of correct myself very quickly and get back into position to try to make the save. So just because you misread a play doesn't mean you're out of the play. You'd still have to try to get back and make the save. And fortunately, because I made the correct decisions after that in terms of not hugging my post, being up in my crease slightly and still staying manual butterfly, I was able to make the save. Here we are guys, same game again. Like I said, this was an action packed game. There was a lot going on, it was a one goal game. Very, very tightly contested. Uh, and we'll just get right into this one. So they've entered the zone. They have three guys, it's a three on three. I guess really a three on two because our, our uh, defenseman is getting up off of getting checked, but they're gonna try to just pass it across one T. Yes, it's kind of a muffin, but we're able to make the glove save. And let's kind of break down what I was looking for there and what happened. All right, guys, we're gonna pick this up here. I know it's very similar, but there's, there's one important thing I wanna show here that tells me this pass is coming, which is what I think contributed to allowing me to make this save. Yes, it wasn't an absolute frozen rope, you know, missile of a shot, but I still could have reacted poorly or not anticipated it. So forwards bring it in, he's on his forehand. Now watch, right there, as he's kind of dragging it, that's telling me that he's looking to pass. That, in addition to this forward right here, can't, again, the recording's kind of at poor quality, I apologize, but he has gold 1T. So he's dragging it, he's looking for the pass. For some reason, um, guys just don't seem to lose the puck when they're dragging it on their forehand. Their passes should be crisper more accurate because you're kind of loading it up which makes sense i don't have an issue with that but you have to look for those things and you have to be ready for them so i should have been hypercritical of myself been a little lower in my crease as i saw that happening because yes he can shoot but realistically they're looking to make the pass and you couple that with the fact that we have a winger on d not knocking it by any means but he doesn't have a defenseman's build he's probably not gonna intercept the pass unless it hits him or he manually blocks it so Everything here is, is saying that the pass is coming. And of course, then the pass will come over here and it will connect. And at this moment right here, we've moved what? Maybe half a second, maybe a second. We know 100% this shot is coming. There's nothing else. You can bet a million dollars on it and it is a shot. And the reason you know is gold 1T is lit up and the stick is off the ice. Uh, if his stick was still on the ice or gold T wasn't lit up, then we know he may be looking to just receive the pass, maybe get me to skate out of position, and then he shoots or makes another pass, whatever the case may be. But at this point, because we see that happening, we know the shot's coming. Full send, we are ready for it, and we are moving as quickly as we can. Now, some teams, you know, this player will take the puck and will shoot against the grain, against the way you came. Most of the time, the shot is going to be coming your far post my arrows are massively exaggerated tonight wow um you got to move all the way you got to move as much ice as you can because if he's going to shoot against the grain you got to hope that you're still in position to make that save but you can't give up that far side because you do have to make the save uh, especially in a one goal game going in the third and so he's going to get this shot off it's probably one of the weakest you know one t activated gold one t shots i've seen but we're moving with it and we're getting over there. We're trying to make the save. Fortunately, you know, we flash the leather, make the save, keep the game or keep the lead intact in this game. And we're able to kind of then freeze it and get the offensive or the D zone draw. Hey guys, I believe this is the final clip from this game. Uh, as you can see, unfortunately though, they did tie the game. So we're going to get into what happens here and how we are able to then protect this tied game. Off the turnover, they pick it up. They're going to re-enter the zone. And again, same sort of situation, looking for that 1T. We're able to slide over and make the save and not overcommit and give up, you know, a follow-up goal or anything along those lines. So let's get into it, get into what I saw there and how I was fairly confident that the play was the one they were going for. So picking this one up a little bit further into the play after they've already taken up the puck, he does have his gold 1T lit up. I'm not really sure what causes that. Um, but we're pretty confident that this 1T is coming. A, for some reason, when when the team, when the attacking team's on a power play, they all just seem to look for the one-timer, um, coupled with the fact that, you know, we're in 
pretty good position for the puck as it is. Uh, he has a lot of ice over here to work with. And then also, it's kind of hard to see in the moment, but as you can see, he's in a stride. He is coming down to kind of step into the shot. So that gives us, you know, kind of a few indications that they're looking for the one T here. And we've got to recognize that and react accordingly because it's it's blocker side. It's, it's a dangerous, more dangerous play. Excuse me. Again, he's going to float it, hold it forehand. Again, like I said last time, stick is up in the air. We know the one T is coming. There's no other play that can happen here. And all we have to do is try to get over and make the save. So one T is going to come across. We make the save. And then as you can see, um, we started because we were pushing right on the left stick so hard to try to get over there. We actually made the save and then we gave another half push to the right, which takes us out of position for a rebound. So we had to then very quickly get back in position on the left and get there and thankfully get the cover puck before they were able to pick up the puck and pass it for the easy tap in. But we were ready for that pass to come across. Not saying we would have gotten it, can't guarantee that, but we did recognize that that was kind of the next step in that play for them, uh, a play all across to the far side of the post. But this is a situation again where, uh, I said it kind of last play and I'll say it again, when that stick is in the air, guys, the one T is coming. There's, there's nothing else. Just commit to it, speed boost it, maybe do a desperation save if you want. Maybe that works for you. Whatever you got to do to get over there to make that save because you know the one T is coming. 